Rodolfo, there's been a lot of conversation recently between science and religion, some of it harmonious, some of it acrimonious, and that's not a value judgment because maybe it should be acrimonious. Um, let's just say what, what, what it is. Uh, uh, there, there are different ways that science and God can communicate. They can be talking about two separate things. They can cooperate and reinforce each other. They can totally contradict each other. Uh, there can be uh, uh, different uh, ideas that one has about the other and, and can, one can limit the other. Speaking as a scientist, what, how, how do you view the, the capacity of science to even be discussing things about God? Okay, so as a scientist, uh, I use scientific method to think. I use scientific method to understand the universe around it. Scientific method requires a well-known set of steps that you should have a hypothesis that you can test. If you, have a, if you don't have hypothesis or you have hypotheses that are not in principle testable, mm -hmm. uh, this then becomes a bit of a problem. Uh, it may be that uh, they are not testable momentarily. That uh, some people would say evolution is not testable. Evolution is testable, and in fact, uh, there is very serious um, scientific basis to uh, believe that this is in fact what happened. Anyhow, if you consider a a uh, situation where, by definition, scientific method cannot be utilized then I have to say, from a scientific point of view, is not a question that I can understand from the point of view of a cognitive uh, function of the brain, in the sense that the, co the cognitive function of the brain, in order to be able to understand, it requires to be able to understand the origin. You have to have a, a historical event that has to do with causality, A causes B causes So you have to be able to trace it back to something. So if you if you cannot, as a scientist, have a traceable causal uh, a okay. continuity, or you cannot apply the scientific method, does that mean, A, that I just can't discuss the question, it may or may not be true, but I just can't discuss it, or if it doesn't f f fall under one of these two concepts, scientific method or, or causality, then by definition, it is. It is doesn't exist. I mean, we can exclude it from reality, or is it just outside of our purview? Big difference. I, absolutely, a huge difference. Um, so, the way I address it is slightly different. The way I address it is, uh, what is the probability? If I go there, I have no problem. I simply say, listen. Uh, the probability is so extraordinarily low that while not being able to discard it, I find it so unlikely as to I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And it's a serious answer, although it sounds like I'm coughing out. That's not simply not the case. Uh, events that have an infinitesimal, that they have a very, very low probability uh, of existence, and one can discuss why that is the case are simply uh, not very interesting. Okay, I, I, I would accept that. Now let's find out why you, you assign God, as a scientist, a very low probability, because either it is, it is uh, applicable and discernible, some things with the scientific method, yeah. or not. Because it's total inability, the total inability has that, that God has to implement anything, to be in any form, discernible. I have no measure possible. And I know that even those who believe in God deeply know that there is no possible way. So, since there is no, no possible way for of discerning its existence. Of proving his existence. No, discern, measure something that tells me that God exists. Anything. So, are we saying that discernment is the same thing as measurement? Yes, indeed. In this case, for me, it is that. Is it in every case? In every, in every case there, that I know concerning my cognition or concerning my ability to understand things. Okay. Um, discernment equals measurement. If you cannot right. measure, you cannot discern. Absolutely. I, I'm, a log I'm a logical positivist. I require to be able to have a hypothesis that is testable. This is a hypothesis that is not testable. Does that imply that it doesn't exist? No, but it implies it has a very low probability. Yeah. 
So the probability is very low. Probability of you know finding uh, um, I don't know unicorns, whatever. I mean, so the things that we have invented in a are so low that I don't suffer about it. So God would be among a whole infinite class of, of imaginary things that one can not logically totally exclude, but because the discernment of such is, the, you need to be able to measure to discern, and you cannot measure anything. The, 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 the problem with God is that it's suspect. In my case, I find the idea suspect. Why? Because God is also power, human power. I am king by the grace of God. <laughs> I, God says that you cannot do this. God said that you have to give money. God needs money. Please, what well, are we but, talking about? But those are all human be doing crazy things. Uh, no, 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 no. So, so the, the problem is if you throw all those humans, if you throw all of those religions, uh, there is almost nothing left. Well, you can't you can't uh, 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 discern a, a metaphysical or ontological reality based upon what a lot of crazy people do or, or good-meaning people who are all wrong. Well, but if you define philosophers as what philosophers do, you might you might find uh, religion as what religion does, and what religion does is sometimes not that uh, nice.